Welcome back to Halftime on San Antonio Sports Star ESPN AM 1250 and 103.3 FM. We're on the go at SASportsStar.com. My name is Michael Jimenez, hanging out with Rudy J. Yep, yep. It's a special time, and we have a guest on the, on the show, Phil Wellman, the manager of the San Antonio Missions, is joining us right now. How's it going, Welly? How are you guys doing? Doing great, Skip. How are you? I've been better, but uh, we're making it. <laughs> it's been a slow start to the year, man. You know, right now the missions have lost seven games in a row. It's been a slow start, and uh, but are you trying to take something positive out of what you've seen so far to start the season? Well, well you have to. You know, when you're off to a two and eight start and you lost seven in a row, there's not a there's not a whole lot of sunshine. But uh, you know, we 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 we're, we've not been discriminant in how we lose games. Some nights we we don't hit. Some nights we get bad starting pitching some nights we hit and get good starting pitching and then our bullpen fails us the next night we uh we make three errors so you know we got a lot of things floating around that we need to we need to tighten up and uh you know it, it's kind of what I, my message is going to be to them today if you, if you were two and eight in the middle of july you know people wouldn't notice so much but when you start the season out two and eight it's it's you know it's it's on everybody's mind well you won't do it, Skip, so I will. I got a chance to sit down with you on media day. And literally, literally, you were meeting, you were meeting your players, some of your players that day. So again, I'm not trying to make excuses for you, but when I'm meeting half of the team, I don't maybe I'm exaggerating, but when I'm meeting a good portion of players, the day that we're, you know, starting training camp, it's gonna be a little difficult to come out the gates firing. You don't even know where everybody's going to be yet, where everybody fits best. So I'll give you a little cushion because, again, I, I wouldn't have known that had I not gone to media day and heard that right from your mouth. No, but you know what? That's the case with a lot of, okay. lot of minor league okay. men who was in the situation. And and you know what? The, the, the problem it creates is how you're going to use guys in the bullpen. And, right. Uh, you know, most of the guys in the bullpen – uh, a few of the starters I know and some of the position players I knew, but most of the guys in the bullpen, other than Henry Henry and Carlos Berlin, who I had last year, and, and Kevin Tops, the rest of them I have no clue. And to be honest with you, you know, 10 games in, I'm still searching for, for the right, you know, because my, my job is to put guys in a position to succeed. And, uh, you know, not knowing them and not knowing their makeup and not knowing how they respond to mm -hmm. adversity or, or pressure type situations you know the only way to find out is baptize them by fire and throw them out there and you know if, if it doesn't look like a good fit then we try somebody the next day but we'll eventually get it figured out and that's what i've told them you know give me give me a couple of weeks and and i'll try to figure out some roles for you where you where you have the best chance of succeeding but until then your job is to get guys out when when you get the ball what are the bright spots so far any players sticking out right now that we we should keep an eye on this summer you know it's as Dury Rees and, and Brandon Dixon, uh, Robbie Podorsky are swinging the bat really well. Our two young outfielders, um, Augustine Ruiz and, and Tirso and Ornelis, both one of them got four hits yesterday and one got three. You know, anytime you score 10 runs and get 15 hits, you feel like you ought to win a ball game. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for us, our bullpen imploded yesterday and, and, uh, and there were, I don't think I've ever seen it before. We, we gave up 17 runs in the final three innings of the game. And, uh, it's, but, you know, and then doesn't negate the, the good offensive days, uh, as Stuart Reeves hit a grand slam, Brandon Dixon hit two home runs, uh, Mornalis had four hits and Ruiz had Augustine Ruiz had three, you know, there's some guys that are, they're swinging the bats. Our offense seems to be settling down. We're, when we get on, we're stealing second and, and running the base as well. We're just, we still have to get some hits with runners in scoring position, but. You know, when you when you have a six run lead going into the six, you feel like you you got a chance right there. And if your bullpen does its job, and nails it down, we ought to we ought to have a win. But unfortunately, it didn't work out that way for us yesterday. But you know, um, there's still some bright spots, and that's what I think you have to you have to grow off of. And that's that's the things I'll bring up in our meeting today. Uh, I mean, again, what we just talked about. You know, you're still getting to know your squad, but. So I feel crazy even ask you this, but what can you tell us about this Amarillo team you're going to be facing tonight? You know, I don't know them. I don't know them very, yeah. very well either. You know, all we can right. do is, is, uh, you know, get on our computers and do our advanced <laughs> scouting report. And we look at, you know, we look at, uh, 
their spray charts and we look at their their heat map zones at, at the plate and find out where where they swing the bat the best and we try to go to the opposite spot but it still comes down to to executing and and um you know if we know a guy can't hit a fastball in our pitchers have got to be able to stick it in there if they can't they're going to get hit and uh you know again this is my 23rd year in double a and i've seen many a good pitcher many a good hitter prospect players come in people forget fernando tatis hit hit 179 in april and uh you know that that's that's a very special player and you get you get guys here who've never been in double a they got to get their feet wet and and they're not used to seeing two o sliders and three one change ups and you know it's a different animal than a ball was and it's the same thing for the pitchers they have to learn to pitch pitch backwards sometimes and and if they're not real comfortable throwing their secondary stuff over the plate behind in the count it's going to catch up to them but they'll figure it out that is philip wellman manager of the san antonio missions you know the missions come back to town next week is there anything to be said about home cooking? Just coming back home, playing in front of the the crowd at the Wolf. Is there anything to be said about playing at home compared to being on the road? No, you know it, it's the way we're playing right now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where we're <laughs> playing. You know, we we're we're in search of, of of you know trying to get everything to come together. Our defense, our pitching, our hitting all in one day. And to be honest, I don't think. I don't care, and I don't think the players care where it happens. It, you know, it needs to happen. We we just came from home where we got swept. So, you know, if if we can just get a win or two and, and get kind of get rolling, I think that's that's the biggest issue. You know, I, I managed a club a few years ago that won won a league championship that right. started out six and twenty four, and it was probably the longest wow. thirty games of my life. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they kept them together, and the guys stayed together, and they kept playing, and they kept getting better. You know that's our message with the staff. We talk about it every day. We got to stay positive. We got we just keep a, a good blue collar work environment. You know, and uh, don't panic. And, right. And just we have some good players, and uh, we have a lot of inexperienced players that that are going to be good. But in in the in the time it takes to get that experience, there may be some rough patches. So. It, you know, 10, 11 games in, have the bigger bases made a, a difference, Skip? Or, is it, or, or what know. What are we I, doing? I, I haven't I haven't seen that. You know, there's some <laughs> bang-bang plays on stolen bases at second that, you know, last year Chandler Siegel threw out over 50% of the guys that attempted to run on him, and now it seems like bang-bang are safe. And I don't know if that's mm. the extra six inches or, or what, but, um, you know – the, the 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 time clock is the thing that's made the most impact, and I read an article this morning that it's shaving 20 minutes off the game, which, you know, I've been in it a long time. I don't care about that 20 minutes, and and you know what, we're 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 supposed to support it and and all, but you know, it's like I told you on media day, if you don't like playing chess, go play checkers. Hey, you know, and that and to me, I think baseball as a whole is this whole thing. Like, if you weren't watching baseball before the 20 minutes off is going to make you watch it I, it's it's a no. crazy thing to me that this is an issue like well let's that that if you're base like i i'm a fan of please the masses not the asses like if you don't want to watch it don't yeah. watch it <laughs> yeah that that's kind of how i am i you know it's 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 affected some things in the game that the people that made the rules have no real true understanding of you know between pitches you know, I got to call throwovers. I got to call pitch outs. I got to call, you know, hold and step off, hold and pitch, hold and pick. I, I'm very tentative in calling hold, you know, where the pitcher just comes set and holds the ball. That's the best way to control the opposition running game. But I can't do that with a clock ticking. Right. You know? And if I, hold, if I hold it and the pitcher holds it, you know, like he's supposed to hold it three seconds, well, he may end up having a pitch violation and getting a ball called on him. So, it's it's changed some of that stuff, but I think that's the whole intent is they want more action, they want a faster game, they want more stolen bases, mm -hmm. um, you know. But in doing so, you know, if you, if you're creating more run scoring situations, you're gonna have you're gonna have longer games. But I, you know, I I'm still old school where I appreciate a two to one game, and uh, yeah, respect. You know, I'm not sure everybody agrees with that, but. Um, getting beat 19 to 10 yesterday wasn't that much fun. I, I, you know, it's, it's a two to one game is a, is a beautiful thing to me. Now, one last question I need to ask because uh, we need to have a get to know you segment when it comes to this, but years ago you had a bit of a, of a, 
of a showing that made it on Sports Center and whatnot after you got ejected from uh, one of the games. And years later, if you're thinking about this going back in time, it, for, for those of you who don't know, there was a, a time when you got ejected and you did this whole thing where it was beyond yelling at the umpire. You went out and basically pretended that you were throwing grenades at them with the rosin bag and whatnot. Going back in time and thinking back about that whole thing, because I think it's fan fantastic, by the way. Uh, going back, do you look back at that with, with uh, do you think to yourself, oh my God, I can't believe I did that back in the day? Or do you look back and think to yourself, uh, I'm proud of that? No, I'm, it probably neither. I'm not proud of it, but I don't regret it either. I mean, I, I did what I did. And you know, I've always preached to these young men, you got to lie in the bed you made. And, you know, I made that bed for myself. It was 15 years ago, but you know, I, sometimes I wish I was still young enough to get out on the <laughs> skip. It was amazing. It was, it, was, awesome. it, it was amazing. I am not mad at it. I would love to see the return of it this year. That is fantastic. But we're looking forward to seeing you guys because, again, you guys are coming back in town next week. Uh, got a game tonight. So, some home cooking. We have a, a Tuesday. Or was it $2 Tuesday? $2 going Tuesday on? next Tuesday. Yeah, we got to get out there. Exactly. So we're going to give away tickets later on in the show. But, Skip, thanks for being on with us, and we hope to have you on. Uh, the rest of the year and hopefully you end the week uh, on a high note well you know it's 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 always easy to come on when you've won seven straight but uh, <laughs> it's much easier to do that when, when you lost seven straight but you know what if you guys are willing to have me whether we win or lose i'll be here absolutely i'm a, i am big big into missions games i love going to the wolf i go at least five or six times a year i rent out the boxes um you know i i, I take clients out there it's an amazing time. It's a fun time for families out there beyond the $2 Tuesdays. I don't care if it's a Wednesday or a Thursday or Friday. It's just good times out there. I know you guys oftentimes have concerts. You guys have the fireworks displays for 4th of July weekend. It's a great time. Support the missions. Go out there. Support support Skip. And uh, it's going to be a great time, man. You Win or lose, you can have fun at the missions games. I appreciate it. You guys yell at me when you come out there. Well, Outstanding. Do. Thank you. Uh, Skip it, Wellman, Skip. how you doing? Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. I can't believe you went there, dude. I had to go there. I can't believe you went I, there. I had, like, I had to go there. Fifteen years ago, man. That's... You know what? It's fifteen years ago, but it lives in infamy in a good way because we were talking about this. Because I'm looking at you when you're about to. When I notice this, where you're going, I'm yelling eject. Yeah, Yo, you're telling me no. I'm, tell, I'm yelling you're eject. You're telling me no, dude. <laughs> I'm like, if, bro, if you it was interview fifteen years ago, if you interview Reggie Miller, you need to talk about the time that he went after. Spike Lee. Well, see, this is the thing, and I'll give props to Wellman for this. He did a great but, job. Yeah, because sometimes when it's something that you've been asked a thousand times and it's something that that long ago, it can go the wrong way. It, but it can go the wrong way with certain athletes, certain entertainers. Like, come on, man, that was 15 years ago. Like, why are you still talking about that? But props to him for, for still being cool about it. Dude, it's one of those things where I think if I came at it from being, like, holier than thou, yeah. I would have been that would have been wrong. Right. I enjoyed everything he did there, but again, we're going till two o'clock. But you're a missions fan, and you and you spend money out there, so you you can ask that. It's I, fair. I can't, I it's love, fair game. Dude, spend I spent a lot of money, a lot of advertising dollars that I spent on my own pocket over at Missions Games. Nice. I love going out there. 